Okay, today we're going to be unboxing and testing the eDiag YA201 OBD2 Enhanced Code Scanner, which has some bold claims. Number one, for $18, live data. Now, this is very interesting, and i uh, never seen a live data uh, graphing device for $18. But we're going to find out. It's going to be exciting. Supports OBD2, EOBD, and the CAN protocols. What is inside here? The anticipation. Oh, there we go. There it is. So right there, it looks like it's powered from the OBD2 port here. There's also a mysterious USB cable. Maybe that's for firmware. I'm not sure. And here's a very small manual here. So let's have a look in here. There's some uh, general things we can do. Uh, specifications, TFT color screen, a yeah, data link connector here, yeah. connect the tool, sort of shows you how to connect it, else? okay so here's our feature list here, read and arrays, you, you can kind of do that with a super cheap dongle, but this kind of live data that might be interesting, um, sensor test, various other things, so basic stuff, but that will be interesting to see. Oh, we've got our IM readiness, so we'll know I'm ready for our smog chuck. There, yeah. Yeah, it looks interesting, doesn't it? So, uh, tells you what various things mean. A little lookup chart. A nice little reference manual as well as a, a small user manual, which is you know, actually quite good English. So, let's plug it in and see what we can do with this. So the first thing I did, I connected it to my computer by the USB cable. Why not? I instantly got upgrading. Upgrading? Upgrading what? It's not even connected to the internet. So uh, it is a bit of a mystery. Uh, it doesn't even talk about the USB port on the bottom and they do ship you a USB cable. Why is it included? I have no idea. How do you use it? No idea. Let's just hope that the uh, firmware is good and we never need to upgrade it because I have no idea how so let's get it in the car okay so we're sitting in the car we've plugged it in it's powered up I don't think there's an inbuilt battery in here it kind of just takes power from the vehicle through the OBD2 port um, but you know it is what it is for $18 uh, it probably won't have one uh, so there's four menu options here it doesn't seem to be more than that uh, let's start with the easiest ones and work our way up. So, uh, settings, we can change the language, we can change the units, metric and English, that's pretty funny actually. So, yeah, metric and imperial there, data logging on or off, not sure what that does. Self test, I think this will just do display test to make sure your four buttons and the display is working, not something we'll ever really need to use. Uh, battery, this will probably tell the vo voltage, oh, look at that, it's graphing. So this is the voltage of our battery here. So I assume the volt uh, voltage is 13.4 because the alternator is charging the battery, and that's why that's so. Bit of a useless graph, but um, better than nothing, right? DTC lookup. Now I think this is where, um, we can use Google for this, you know, but you can also do it on this. So if you get a trouble code, it looks like you can do it for the type of vehicle you have if you have manufacturer specific problem code. So this is a GM. Now this is a GM specific code, uh, 1031. Let's see, if, see what it will tell us about this. So it says, oh, there's a, a O2 sensor heater problem. So not much else, but we can find out what the problem is from here. It might not offer a fix might not offer much else but um, you know it's, it's, it's not bad for $18 is it so generic code uh, let's put our popular uh, misfire code in so say a cylinder 1 misfire which is PO301 so generic means it will work on pretty much any manufacturer out there it's a generic code so here we go cylinder 1 misfire detected Oh, so it actually it expands on the generic ones. So it probably has a good database of generic ones. And when we go to specific manufacturers, it probably thins out a bit. 
But we can see here, look, the trouble code indicates there's a misfire in cylinder one. It doesn't say, oh, maybe your fuel injector is clogged, oh, maybe your spark plug needs changing. So it doesn't offer solutions, but it just gives you a rough direction. And again, it's got all these kind of makes in here. Again, it's just a database of information. It's quite easy to get on Google, but you know, on a touchscreen device for 18 bucks, it's not bad, is it? So now the big one, diagnosis. So it's scanning the protocols to find out which one our car has, and then it's going to use that protocol to connect to the uh, car and read, uh, talk with the ECU. So information, uh, we have no check engine light look, off, ignition type, spark, seven monitors okay. So let's just click OK. Here we go. So we can read engine codes. We don't have any. We don't have any codes on this car. It's all working fine. <laughs> so I can't really read any, but we're going to have a look anyway. Yeah, so none in there. But that's where you can read the codes, and that's where they'll appear. Live data. Now, this is interesting. So I notice, actually, the text kind of goes almost off the screen. It's just an observation. So all data stream. Now this is all the things this can monitor on this specific vehicle. This is a Saturn View 2007. If you have a different vehicle, you may have different things here. Let's see if we can get out the sun a second. Uh, there we go, that's better. So these are the, all the little monitors here that you can read off this specific car. So quite a few look. We've got uh, fuel trims, short and long fuel trims. It's slowly populating. RPM, let's uh, rev the car, look. A yeah, little, little slight delay, no big deal. Yeah, various things in here. So now, uh, I think the ultimate test for this would be to see which of these monitors we can graph. This might be quite interesting. So it's loading, it's thinking about it. Okay, so these are the sensors or monitors, whatever you want to call them. This is what we can graph. So it looks like this we select the ones we want to graph. Let's do them all, why not? Press the back button. Bit weird, isn't it? Now you see the top right corner, we have seven graphs going on. So you can see it's slowly monitoring with uh, respect to time. Let's go down. Let's go to the RPM, that one's pretty easy to test. Let's rev the car. Now that's not bad for $18, is it? A built-in screen and some graphing for seven monitors there. And again, you may have more with your vehicle. Um, you know, mileage may vary, but yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? You, you gotta admit for the price. Now you can record and play back. So if you're driving, you know, you don't want to look at this. It's dangerous. Do on you, you know, go on your drive, record one of the monitors and play it back when you get home. So it looks like we can record various things here. Fuel trims, RPM. So let's record the RPM. Now there's three memory slots there. Let's overwrite that one. Yes, I did have a play around with this before. So we can record the RPM, go out on a drive. Okay, we're kind of done recording. We've got back home. We want to play it back. That's the memory slot. So there's three memory slots we can put things into. And then we can kind of just watch it back. And try and troubleshoot any problems. So yeah, record playback. Pretty cool. Freeze frame as well, where when something happens, we can kind of look at, you know, what the hell happened. <laughs> um, I am readiness. Are we ready for our smog check? Do we have any monitors? So my EVAP monitor there, it's not ready yet, so if I'm in a state where that needs to be, you know, ready, I'm going to fail my smog check, so uh, quite useful. O2 sensor test, component test, so the EVAP leak test here, it sent a command to the ECU. Uh, that's, a, that's about it in the diagnostic menu. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, um, let's talk about options with this. Now we've looked at all the features on here. 
Okay, so we're back inside where it's uh, a lot cooler now. It's boiling out there. So we've had a play around with this. Quite impressed with the features for $18. Now, what do you get for less money than that? This thing here, $10. Uh, the difference is, well, this doesn't have a nice colorful screen. It's just text. It tells me rough IM readiness for a smog check and can read generic trouble codes. So it can pretty much do everything this can without the graphing and the DTC lookup. And that's about it. So that's $10 worth there. This one, uh, this was $6. This thing, by itself, useless. It needs a phone or a laptop to go with it. Uh, so you plug it in your ODBD2 port and it Bluetooths your phone. And on your phone, you can have like a Talk app, which is a free app, and that'll do graphing just like this can. So with your phone, an app, and this dongle, you are pretty much just as powerful as this, maybe a little more so. However, you will need your phone with you, uh, you'll need Bluetooth on, and you'll need the dongle as well. So the choice is yours, really. For a self-contained device that doesn't need a phone, it doesn't rely on Bluetooth wireless dongles and all stuff like this. This is pretty good. You know, it's, it's self-contained. The only thing you need is this. If your phone is dead, you still have this. It doesn't have a battery or anything, so it's not going to, you know, um, swell up in the heat or anything like that. It's purely powered from your uh, car itself. So, um, you know, you can't really go wrong. It, it's a good option. It's a good one to have. Um, I don't know if I'd use it for my main one. I have something, uh, you know, a lot more powerful, a lot better. Um, but certainly for something, you know, on the side or you want to just slip in a spare vehicle or anything like that. Uh, it supports various protocols. It, it's a good buy. You know, it's not too bad. Um, obviously, there's a few problems, a few features that could be <laughs> uh, better. You know, it is what it is. So, um, yeah, that's how it works. Uh, for one that's my opinion on it and lastly that's how it sort of compares with similar cheap products uh, on the market as well so if you want to try this i'll um, link it in the description below so you can check that out and try one for yourself as well so i hope this helped you and thank you for watching